Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, this is Shannon Bacon with the American Cancer Society in North Dakota. And welcome, we're going to be sharing today results from a small community assessment that was conducted in Grand Forks in 2018. Many of you participated in it, so I'm excited to kind of be able to share back some of the themes that emerged with you. And really, we're hoping that this can spark some follow-up discussions kind of focused on maybe specific areas where you see opportunity. Um, just a couple housekeeping things. Um, make sure to mute your line if you're on by Skype. You can click on the microphone button kind of down in the center bottom of the screen, and you'll see an X over the microphone once you're muted. And if you're joining by phone, you can use the, the mute controls on your phone, or you can press star six. And we did send out a PDF version of the slides this morning. So if you're not on by, by Skype, you can also follow along using the PDF if that's easier for you. Um, for those that are on by Skype, there is a chat option. So feel free to type comments, questions in the chat box. I think what we'll probably do is try to address questions at the end of the call, kind of as part of discussion. Um, just to make sure we get through the slides first, but we should have plenty of time for discussion. Um, and like I said, this will be recorded. And so if there are others you feel um, you'd like to have this information, but they weren't able to make it, we will have that link available for you. All right, so we have a full agenda today. Um, we'll, we'll share a little bit about links of care, what the background on that project is, um, some key themes from the community assessment that was conducted, and then I'm really excited we will hear from Valley Community Health Centers and All True Health about some really great partnership that they have formed around colorectal cancer screening, and then we'll have time for discussion and questions. So some of you are familiar and others might be wondering what is links of care. Um, so the American Cancer Society and the National Colorectal Cancer Roundtable conducted several links of care pilots across the nation. And really these were looking at how do we improve colorectal cancer screening and follow up care when we look at our uninsured and underinsured patients um, by strengthening relationships between the federally qualified health centers, or you might know them as community health centers, um, and the surrounding medical neighborhood. And after three successful pilots around the country, ACS is now really investing in expanding this approach across the nation. So exciting, Valley is actually one of the earliest partners to kind of join this expansion of the links of care model um, and kind of learn with us in partnership what this can look like in different communities, which is very exciting. And so why links of care? So <clears throat> we know that uninsured and underinsured patients at FQHCs a lot of times are facing barriers to specialty care. And this can present a real challenge um, in colorectal cancer screening in the process. And a patient you know, they might complete a take-home stool test, which is, of course, a great screening option with strong evidence and fairly low barriers. Um, but if that test is positive, which four to eight percent of them are, that patient might have a lot of difficulty accessing the follow-up colonoscopy and, in some cases, treatment if they don't have that medical coverage. So without a strong follow-up process and access in place, it can be difficult to recommend stool testing as an option, and we know there are many other barriers. So really, links of care um, takes a two-pronged strategy when we think about kind of the broad goals. And number one is increasing timely access to specialty care providers. And number two is for the FQHC to also focus on evidence-based strategies internally to increase colorectal screening rates. So we are um, about a year and a half into this project, which is a three-year project in Grand Forks. And the project team does have a number of deliverables that they're working on. So Valley Community Health Center has set their baseline screening rate, they have set screening goals, they have begun implementing evidence-based interventions, and you'll hear later about 
the partnership between Valley and Altru um, to kind of look at enhancing both coordination and access in screening. And Valley has developed systems for tracking follow-up colonoscopy rates. And really, we've already begun sharing some lessons learned back with stakeholders in North Dakota, and we'll continue to do that as we learn together. So part of this process has been to conduct a small community assessment. And this included an electronic stakeholder survey, as well as key informant interviews. So today we're going to share some of the themes that we found. <clears throat> And just a quick note on methodology, really the objective here was to capture stakeholders' perspectives on barriers and opportunities related to colorectal screening and treatment in Grand Forks. And so this was a fairly brief online survey. Many of you participated in it, um, and it took probably about five or ten minutes to complete. The questions that we used were adapted from the Minnesota Links of Care pilot, and the partners who received the survey were identified by ACS, Valley Community Health Centers, and All True Health. And then key informant interviews. Um, also, the discussion guide was adapted from the Minnesota Links of Care pilot, so that gave us a lot of guidance. Um, and then 10 interviews were conducted. Some of them were in person, and some were via phone. And these were conducted by a vendor hired by ACS. And you can see on the bottom bullet, <clears throat> or second to bottom bullet, the interviewees that participated included providers, nurses, endoscopy staff, pharmacy, Valley Community Health Center staff, language interpreters, and actually two patients participated. And we'll hear their stories today too, which are really interesting. So this is a list of the key themes that came out of that assessment. And what we'll do today is just dive briefly into each of these and kind of um, what were the comments made and what were some of the opportunities identified. So first, cost of care was identified by stakeholders really as a significant barrier for uninsured and underinsured patients, um, particularly in delivering follow-up colonoscopy after a positive stool test. <coughs> um, so you can hear, see here some of the numbers. Significant number of respondents, this was in the survey, identified cost of related services like PrEP and transportation as challenging, and many named lack of awareness of existing sites that provide no cost or low cost screening or treatment, and limited access to charity care as a challenge. Um, I thought it was interesting that you know, while stakeholders did identify the cost of cancer treatment as a challenge, they actually ranked it as less of a challenge than the, the payment for screening among the uninsured and underinsured. So that was interesting. There were a number of assets that were identified. So part of the assessment process was to look at really positive things that are happening in the community that we can build off of. Um, and so some of these included the social work services available at Valley that can help connect folks with community resources, um, the open access colonoscopy at Altru, which means that folks don't have to have a pre-visit before colonoscopy, which definitely helps remove one barrier, um, the existing financial assistance programs, which we'll hear a bit about later, Inspire Pharmacy's sliding scale fee, and many of you are familiar with the Run for Your Buns race, which does raise funds for colonoscopy assistance in Grand Forks, which is great. And there were also some opportunities and recommendations that were made by stakeholders. So <clears throat> the first was to actually identify the annual follow-up or diagnostic colonoscopy need among Valley Community Health Center patients who are uninsured or underinsured. And the second listed here was to seek sources to then assist low income or uninsured cancer patients, particularly with out of pocket drug costs was one of the needs that came up. So this slide, um, this map is not actually part of the community assessment, but we decided to include this because it does help address one of the recommendations that was made by stakeholders during the assessment. So what you see here is that 
the Community Health Care Association of the Dakotas, or CHAD, which is the, the membership um, association for FQHCs across the state. So CHAD and ACS worked with health centers um, across North Dakota who used a formula to then estimate their need for uninsured colonoscopy per year. And Valley did participate in that process. So that recommendation to kind of identify that need and put a number to it um, is something that Valley has done along with other health centers across the state. And I could definitely send a PDF of that map um, after the call. The second category after cost that, that we wanted to touch on from the community assessment is language, literacy, and communication. And on the survey, 78% of respondents listed language barriers as a moderate or major challenge. And then during the key informant interviews, this was something that really surfaced as a major theme, um, which I'm sure is not surprising to any of you on the line. Um, so interviewees expressed that patients can really have difficulty, you know, navigating the medical system, completing paperwork, securing transportation due to language barriers. And there was also concern expressed about just the challenges of having correct translation, knowing that there can be several dialects for a language, um, and also comments that written instructions are often available only in English. Um, and I just put a quote over here that I thought was interesting too. It says, you have an increased risk of inadequate prep for the colonoscopy because they didn't hear or see the right information. So, um, that came out as a major theme. And within language barriers, there was also a consistent theme in the interviews about the importance of in-person interpreter services versus over the phone. And we highlighted a few different quotes here for you. I'm just going to read the first one, um, and then you, you have this file available to you if you want to take a look at the others. But the first one says, Using an interpreter over the phone does not really work for the patient. I worked for a language line company, and when interpreting, you don't really know and can't see everything going on. If the patient is pointing to something or physically is showing signs of distress, you can't see that. If I was physically there, I could ask questions. I can better relate. So definitely one of the assets um, in this category is the fact that Valley Community Health Centers has, you know, on-site interpreters who can help during clinic appointments and who can also assist in contacting patients when they're due or past due to come back to the clinic, which is great. Some of the opportunities that stakeholders recommended under this area. Um, the first one was ensuring that interpreters have detailed knowledge about the cancer screening tests and the steps needed to prepare, et cetera, and that this can really help them in that role of explaining the test to the patient. Another was providing in-person interpreter services, which we touched on. Um, but really across the care continuum, so not just at the primary care level, but really um, taking that service into the specialty care space as well. Doing reminder calls with patients, um, it was recommended to assess how patients learn best and use visual aids when able, um, and then of course providing health education materials in the native language. So the next category was around cultural considerations. Um, this came really out of the key informant interviews and interviewees expressed pretty consistently that patients' medical decisions are often influenced by cultural beliefs, personal experiences, family and community. And the interviewer asked interpreters who patients trust to get information and help with making medical decisions. And some of the responses included family and someone in the community where they live that also speaks their native language. 
Cancer survivors were also called out as a potential effective messenger, even if they don't speak the language um, of the audience. Um, the survivors were kind of referred to as a trusted source of information if there's an interpreter present to help. And I'm just going to read this quote, which was interesting too. It says, if we could increase awareness about cancer and cancer screening, then people in the community who have the disease would be more likely to come forward and tell their story. That would really make a difference. So that was one of the quotes from the interviews. So opportunities that, that um, stakeholders identified in this area were um, really integrating discussion of cancer screening into all appointment types when possible. It was also suggested that these patients might just need additional time with staff to review the information and that they might benefit from a phone call or a letter after the clinic visit to increase their understanding. Um, another strategy recommended was community education about cancer, um, recommended really to increase awareness and reduce fear. And I'll read this quote from one of the interview participants. Follow-up after the clinic visit would be very important as patients may decide not to follow through with a cancer screening test, even if they agree to do this in the clinic. They may decide that they will not follow the provider instructions once they get home. That is why clarifying the patient's understanding is critical and also trying to assess their knowledge, beliefs, and personal experiences. So a large number of respondents, um, you can see 86%, also listed poor patient understanding of the importance of colorectal cancer screening as either a moderate or major barrier. And an overall lack of familiarity with preventive care was a topic that surfaced pretty regularly in the, in the interview discussions as well. Um, interviewees commented that many patients just have little experience with preventive health care, particularly among new Americans who are lower income or uninsured and have maybe never had access to preventive care. So several opportunities and recommendations were suggested by stakeholders in this area. Um, these included providing ongoing patient education considering periodically expanding hours for colonoscopy to reduce work-related barriers, um, and looking into opportunities, again, for community education with target populations. Um, it was mentioned, um, you know, potentially hosting free cancer screening education events with incentives such as food or another kind of incentive. And it's probably not a surprise to anyone on the call that transportation to medical appointments arose as another challenge, um, particularly for those lower income patients who are not enrolled in Medicaid. Um, I'm going to read this bottom quote I thought was, was interesting too. One interviewee said, there are patients coming from a nearby reservation who are dependent upon public transportation and limited seating on this bus. Seating on the bus is prioritized for appointments and medical care. Some patients no show for appointments because of this prioritization. So there were several assets pointed out um, in the ability to address transportation barriers. One of the assets is the location of Valley Community Health Center and the fact that it is in walking distance to the mission and to Inspire Pharmacy. So there is, um, you know, a nice kind of little medical neighborhood there. Um, another was the fact that Altru does not require an escort for the colonoscopy procedure. So they can call a taxi when it's time for the patient to return home. They'll physically escort the person down to the taxi and give the taxi driver the address. Um, Lutheran Social Services was also referenced as a resource for helping organize transportation for new Americans, at least for a certain amount of time. 
And stakeholders also shared that patients with Medicaid coverage can have transportation provided, and that does include expansion coverage. A couple of the opportunities identified under transportation um, were just making sure to assess the transportation needs for the patients, and then also identifying potential transportation resources within the community that could provide rides. So our final category um, from the community assessment is colorectal cancer diagnosis and treatment. And within this category, the cost of prescription drugs was really one of the greatest barriers that was identified in treatment. Um, other challenges were fear, lack of knowledge, language, and transportation. Um, so some consistencies with some of the themes that we already heard about. This quote from one of the interviewees says, if the patient does not know anything about cancer, they will think that cancer means death. We must reinforce that cancer does not always mean death. Fear can be overcome by education and support, but it is a challenge. Um, so some of the assets, there were some really strong assets listed about the delivery of cancer treatment in Grand Forks. First, that all patients will receive cancer treatment regardless of their ability to pay. Um, the All True Foundation does provide funding for those who cannot pay for treatment through their Filling the Gap program, which is amazing. Um, and certain social services in the community can assist patients with their $5 copay for prescriptions at Inspire Pharmacy. Um, some of the opportunities suggested were making sure that all uninsured patients are assessed for Medicaid and Medicaid expansion, and if they're not eligible, then being sure to connect them with alternative means of financial support. And it was also suggested to promote follow-up to, to address how to support uninsured and underinsured patients with that cost of medication as they um, take me some medications at home as part of their treatment process. So there were two um, patients who were interviewed and the patients were identified by Valley Community Health Center. Um, they were again interviewed by the vendor hired by ACS. And I've included a description of each patient interview on this slide in the next slide. Um, and I'm not gonna read the entire, the entire description. I wanted you to have that text for future reference. But I will just pull out a couple of the quotes that really stood out. Um, in this first patient, they say, quote, they gave me the test and gave me good instructions on how to do the test. I live at the mission and there is no privacy there. The mission is very close to the clinic. So when I had to have a bowel movement, I came to the clinic to use a bathroom and I had privacy. <clears throat> So this was someone whose stool test then came back positive, and they then did complete their colonoscopy, and they shared, quote, I got a prescription for the prep, and I went to the pharmacy nearby. They explained how to mix the stuff, and I did exactly what they said. I didn't follow the diet all the way because I did not have the food on the list, but I did the best I could. I also... Um, I didn't highlight this, but the, the last comment they make is, I am willing to go back again when it's time because I don't want to get cancer. So I think that's wonderful. This patient had a positive experience and is willing to return for screening. Um, the second patient was someone who took a lot of convincing and rescheduling of no-show appointments, but ultimately did complete their colonoscopy. They spoke very limited English, and so they were actually interviewed via an interpreter. And they commented, quote, I came to the clinic because I was having belly pain. The doctor said I was supposed to have this test, colonoscopy, to check why I was having the pain. I did not want to go for this test, but the doctor kept comforting me and telling me that I needed the test. This patient also commented um, that they did have concerns about the cost of colonoscopy, but they didn't remember if anyone had talked with them about that. 
and they weren't sure if they had medical coverage or not. They did comment again um, towards the bottom about feeling comforted by medical staff during their visit for colonoscopy. And their quote concludes with, they did not find cancer. And now I tell people that I did the test and that I feel good about that. I want other people to do this too. So um, one of the other things that everybody was asked as part of the assessment was other organizations or partners in the community who they feel would be important to collaborate with in order to positively impact some of these barriers. And so you can see this list here and I'll let you sort of skim through this um, and maybe start thinking about if you feel like this is a comprehensive list, if you feel like there are others that maybe need to be pulled into the conversation. And we'll return to this um, later on when we, when we have some time for discussion and Q&A. So that brings us to the end of the community assessment report. Um, and what I'm excited about next is we will hear from Betty Housie, clinical director with Com Valley Community Health Centers, and Wanda Rosenquist, manager of procedural services at All True Health. Um, they've formed a really wonderful, innovative partnership looking at coordination and access and screening. Um, and so I will turn it over to Betty and Wander, you're free to share um, after Betty has some time to share. Hey, Shannon, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Um, well, I just want to thank Shannon again. She's kind of the one that spearheaded this program to begin with, um, with our Bush grant that we had received. And even though the Grand Forks Clinic has been here since 20. 14, we have been collaborating with Altru with our labs and other, other collaborations and other departments and so on and so forth. But I think the most important thing from our collaboration with the colorectal cancer was meeting in person. And that was one thing that Shannon um, got together. She got uh, the people from Altru and from us and we all met together, which was really nice because they weren't aware of some of the things that we did and we weren't aware of some of the the things that they had to offer, some of the different programs, the low cost, no cost. And it also allowed us to be able to put a name to a face and then have that connection. So when we do have those questions, we know who to call kind of the expert in the, in the program and be able to do that. So that helped tremendously. And so it just kind of refined our already collaboration that we've had since the majority of our patients, um, if they choose to go elsewhere for specialty healthcare or, or procedures, they do go to all two since it's right in, in the same town. And so that helped tremendously of trying to kind of um, tweak our system and our workflows and how things go. And now we've built a really good rapport with um, Ashley over at the colonoscopy center and then Wanda and Rhonda. And we've met a few times since then, too. It's just that in-person quick half hour, 45 minute hour meeting over lunch that we just have a quarterly basis or every six months. And we kind of discuss what's going well, what's not going well, um, how we can fix things, um, where we need to concentrate on other things. Um, some of the things that we've come up with is Ashley has sent over the colonoscopy um, prep and also the instructions for getting ready for um, making sure that you you know eat a light diet and no red liquids and so on and so forth. And we had that translated into Somali and Nepali. So that helped tremendously with our patients that don't speak English and have those two languages. And then we also have the prep available, Inspire Pharmacies right across the street. We have those instructions also being able to be given to them in their native language, either by our RN care coordinator or by the pharmacy themselves. So they have not only the instructions that they're getting face-to-face, -face, but also on a piece of paper to relay later on um, to do that. So that has also helped quite a bit. And one thing we're working on right now with um, the North Dakota Department of Health is doing a video on how to do a fit test, which is something they can do here at the clinic, or they can bring it home and do it there. And sometimes the instructions, um, again, you, you can hear them, but until you actually see how simple it is to do it, um, having that visual five to six minute quick video showing it, not only showing them the, um, the instructions, but also the, the being offered in their native language as well. So they're able to see that. So that's something that we're working on here in the next 
few months to have ready as well. So um, yeah, it was something that we had already started with Ultra and we just really fine tuned it with Shannon bringing us together. And now we present it at the colorectal round table together. And then um, this past year, we were just awarded the innovation award here at BCHC, which we're very proud of, um, colorectal cancer. We started probably with a low 20s percent when I started here in 2014, and we are at about 44 to 45% now. And a lot of it is because we share the same EMR system that Altru does. So that helps with finding the colonoscopies, finding the cologuards, being able to find the fit tests if they have them somewhere else. Um, and then also being able to, to refer them to a specialist there, a GI person or whoever we need to. And then having the progress notes readily available to us within minutes after they've been dictated. So um, that's helped quite a bit also with our EMR sharing. Wonderful, thanks Betty. Um, do you want me to show the process map now or do you wanna wait until after Wanda shares a bit? Um, you can show it now since it's okay. kind of, majority of it is kind of ours and then we can do the referral piece after she does. I notice it shows up a little bit fuzzy um, just in presentation mode, <clears throat> but you could, you know, share a little bit about, you know, what it was like to develop this. So before Shannon came and organized us a little bit more, we did have somewhat of a process, but we never really wrote it down. And so with this process now, it's essentially the nurses will prep the charts the day before. And this is one of the things that they'll look for is the colonoscopy um, to see if they're due. And so they look for any patient over the age of 50 and below set through age 74 and see if they've had a colonoscopy, anything on their records. If not, that they, they highlight that they're due for colonoscopy. So that way, not only can the nurse either discuss it or the provider also knows as well. And so they do that prior to all of the visits and then it'll be addressed at that point. And then we give them the FIT test and the FIT test is a one step quick um, test that they can done results are back within 20, 30 minutes. So it's something they could e also do in the clinic. And if they choose to take it with them, what we do is we put the have them self address a postcard. And so we give them about two weeks to return that fit test. If they're having trouble with the postage, we just tell them they can drop it off or we will self um, we'll postage, we'll put postage on the envelope for them to return it. And then in two to three weeks, if they don't get returned, our, our lab personnel will then go through and send those postcards out as a reminder to please return your fit test. And we do about three um, different check-ins, whether it be postcard or a phone call to let them know. And then we just start over with trying to get them to come in and remind them that the importance of it and the screening test is simple. They can do it there at home. Um, and then we also try and highly recommend that they do the stool sample here at Valley Community Health Center. So they're done and be in, and hand in the test and then they're done for a year, depending on what the results are. Um, so we continue to do that. We were already tracking our colorectal scores through um, our quality improvement um, program because of this, them being so low and it's part of our um, some of our preventative health that we're looking at through our grant funds and our SAC grant and other things that we do as a community health center. So that is something we were already keeping an eye on, trying to get our numbers up. And this just reiterated how important it was to have that face-to-face -face collaboration with all two health systems to be able to, to talk to people and find out what resources are out there. And they've been wonderful to provide the resources that are needed for our patients. Wonderful. Thank you, Betty. Wanda, are you on? I can't tell from the Skype list um, unless you're on by phone. Okay, so um, Wanda might have had something come up. I see R Rhonda. <laughs> I see you're on from endoscopy. Um, do you want to share at all about your no cost, low cost program and sort of um, how you guys have been working with Valley to, to kind of increase coordination into that? Shannon? Yep. 
Yeah, this is Wanda. We're having technical difficulties on our side. Oh, okay. We can hear you now. Okay, I just called in, so. Okay. <laughs> So I do have Rhonda with me, I have Cami, and I also have Ashley. So there's a room full. Wonderful. You know, the <laughs> so um, the, the, the question was regarding the, um, the, the funds that are, available, that are available. Yeah, if you'd like to share about your, your funds you have available um, and just the experience of, you know, really partnering between the, the hospital system and the community health center to kind of increase coordination into use of that. Well, I found, I, I find, I found that to be very valuable to have that face to face. And I very much thank the opportunity to have uh, this partnership. And I think we've all learned a lot. We have still a lot of opportunity for growth and serving our, the folks in the community. Um, but the funds, you know, by having that face, you know, um, and uh, understanding the process and how the calls work has been really um, valuable as it relates to um, working with Ashley, a, a coordinated person in that registration role, and with Rhonda as far as if they qualify, um, you know, for any of the funds or the low cost of supporting the funds. Uh, we had grant uh, gala that uh, where we earned uh, quite a, you know, in 2014 where we earned funds to help support our programs. Um, but then Ashley also helps connect folks who are, do not have the insurance. And I'm going to let her speak a little bit about how the process works. And because um, she is that, she is that kind of the gatekeeper. Um, and um, she's worked really closely with, um, with Sally. Hi, everyone. Um, so yes, when we've been getting some of those referrals, if we have patients that don't have any insurance, I have been getting them connected with our HERO program just to see if they can get set up on anything. Um, and then kind of after that point, we are um, trying to get them set up with us using those GALA funds or the Run for Your Buns funds. Um, so I know that just recently I had a call um, from one of the nurses over there just to kind of follow up on a few patients that hadn't scheduled, um, and I think all of them did have insurance though so that's always at least a helpful part if they are already enrolled and um, thankfully a lot of those insurance companies are covering those screening colonoscopies for our patients so you want to tell her about the run for your bun hi did you this is cameron mackey nurse practitioner at all true gi department did you guys have any questions for ashley And feel free um, <clears throat> to come off mute if you do have questions or, or pop them in the chat box. Okay. Um, I, can, I can share just a little bit about our program. We started a race to raise colon cancer awareness uh, here in Grand Forks, and I would say that probably two-thirds of our race participants come from outside of the greater Grand Forks area. And we, it's a family-friendly event. We put kind of a humorous um, but educational twist on colon cancer screening to hopefully reduce uh, the fear and the stigma of having colonoscopies. Um, we have great sponsors that help fund the race, and then all of our net proceeds from the race are then turned over to the All True Health Foundation for the Colon Cancer Screening Initiative. So in the past five years, we've raised over $31,000 um, for this cause. I do believe when we did the gala in 2014, we raised two hundred and fifty dollars or $280,000. So there certainly are funds that are available uh, to be used. Um, the other goal of Run For Your Buns is to get the t-shirts the or the race swag, whether it's the socks, the shirts, the backpacks, whatever, out visible in the community so that it still sparks uh, conversation. Um, and I certainly have, for whoever is on this um, meeting, we have postcards about the upcoming race that if you guys would like them to display in your offices, um, that would help this event out as well and just help to raise awareness. That's great. Thank you, Cameron.
Jenna, I, I, I also want to kind of speak to, you know, it's all true. Um, we've been working very closely with the health coaches that are kind of aligned with all the primary care providers, you know, to really um, increase that awareness and that screening component, um, you know, with colorectal cancer. And um, we really are seeing a, a lot of engagement in that area. So um, it's just getting better and better. That's great. I just pulled up the um, the process, the second part of the process map, and really a little a little bit unorthodox in the sense that um, you know that we had your two facilities kind of come in the room together and do some process mapping, which I think was a lot of fun for those of us who were there. Um, and I wish I would have taken pictures, but it was really you know the Valley team and the Alter team sitting down together, we had post-its all over the wall, <laughs> and we literally were just breaking down step-by-step step, what does this referral process look like. And there's wonderful financial assistance resources available through Altru, but also just really breaking down step-by-step step, what does that look like in terms of how a patient accesses those and what are the processes they go through. Um, and so this kind of second page of the process map is is sort of the work in progress. And I think, you know, through conversation, we keep returning to this and thinking about, okay, maybe we could tweak this part. Um, or maybe here's an opportunity for kind of improving the process. So I think that was a big learning experience as well. And, and I, don't, I would welcome if anyone from Valley or Ultra wants to add to that. So um, we really wanted to have folks on the line today, and I'm glad we got such a good turnout. Um, this was sort of when when Betty and Wanda and I visited about, you know, what to do next with the community assessment results. We felt like we wanted to make the results widely available. So we thought starting with a webinar was helpful because we can put the slides out to everyone. We can record it so that if folks couldn't attend, it's available to listen to. But really, it, you know, is something that's meant to hopefully spark some follow-up discussions. Um, so I do just want to open up for questions or comments. Um, if you had questions about the assessment or if you just saw certain opportunities that you feel like as a community you'd like to kind of see um, explored further. So feel free to take yourself off mute. Um, again, if you're on Skype, you can push the little blue microphone button towards the lower lower middle, or if you're on the phone, you can use your phone controls to unmute. Um, and certainly you're welcome to pop something in the chat box too, if that's easier. See someone's typing. I'm going to also go back to the slide that had um, just potential c community organizations listed that maybe should be engaged. Were there others? Um, oh, Tracy says, I love that the face to face meetings helped. Yeah. And then Tracy um, with Quality Health Associates says, any thoughts to expand that to other facilities in the community? So I'll open that up to um, maybe either Betty or Wanda and your team about thoughts about opening up maybe some additional in-person meetings um, to include other community partners. This is Betty. I think that would be wonderful. I I really enjoy the person the person meeting because then you can at least, like I said, put that name to a face and work with them. It seems a little bit more personable. You get more engaged. Um, you don't have to meet every month person to person, but even just on a quarterly basis, I think it really brings um, two organizations together. So yeah, mm -hmm. anybody would like to do that. I'm definitely all for it. That's great. I feel 
be very beneficial. I mean, on a quarterly basis, you know, to kind of have, um, to kind of just, you know, improve, you know, throughout. I mean, 80% in all through in the community, that is all of us. So I think that's where we need to be. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So when you see this list, um, are there others that you think maybe are missing from this list who should be engaged? Or do you feel like this is fairly comprehensive? Hey, Betty, this is Rhonda. <laughs> what is the name of that um, new housing? LaGrieve um, on First. What's it called? LaGrieve on First. Yeah. We were Supportive just housing, yeah, that. that's missing from here. That would be another one that we would collaborate with, or we do already yeah. collaborate with, but yes. Okay. That's okay. the only one that we have that could be added. Okay. Um, Tracy says there's a new Grand Forks clinic. Possibly add them. Dr. Robidy's clinic, yep. Okay. Is that a primary care clinic? Yeah. Honestly, I'm not sure. Yes, it is. We do okay. get some referrals. That's great. Okay. And were there, I mean, there was, there was a lot of information to digest from the assessment. So I'm sure folks are still kind of taking that in. Um, a lot of it probably wasn't a surprise since many of you were participating in the assessment and helped provide that feedback. But were there certain opportunities where you thought, you know, yeah, that is something we could really kind of start tackling soon um, in terms of some of the recommendations made from the assessment? Hello, this is Wanda. I believe that, um, you know, expansion on the um, languages, you know, uh, Betty, that you have done, you know, to just kind of, you know, and looking at our, some of our additional, especially as it relates to food, you know, as far as the, what they are, uh, are eating or drinking prior to coming on board, I think we have an opportunity to refine that piece. And that's something we spoke about in October when we were there, too. So kind of working on that piece. So they have the best prep they can when they come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought the patient quote was interesting where they said um, that they did their best to follow the food diet, but they didn't have all of that food available. I thought, well, that might be some low-hanging fruit, too, to just assess if the patient has the types of food needed um, and see if there's any community resources that could help make sure they have the, the food needed for the prep diet. This is Sue from the mission. And so if we have advanced notice that there are certain one-time only medical needs that would need to be met for that, um, we could have made arrangements or done our best or better to make some sort of accommodations, both in terms of uh, using a restroom and um, so, I mean, just that one time only diet, dietary need. That's great, Sue. So, I mean, maybe looping your team in with what that prep diet is, would that be helpful if you had a, had a list? If someone is having colonoscopy and stain at the mission? Yeah, and, we, you know, uh, tying, having someone from... Um, like Gail from Valley Community Health or whoever, contacting a need of a social worker and just saying, hey, I have somebody, you know, this is the client, they're having a colonoscopy, and can we make a dietary arrangement for this one day only? That can easily be done. That's great. Thank you. Hi, Shannon. This is Mara. Um, you know, what would also be interesting to take a look at is um, partnership with the Grand Forks Housing Authority as an entire entity as opposed to just LaGrave on first. Each one of the facilities has uh, social work on staff that, you know, if there was a need for some education piece, whether or not they're the community rooms that are there or engaging some of the staff that's um, already 
you know, gained trust within people who are living there, we might be able to tap into some resources um, of just getting that patient education. And maybe um, if screening isn't on someone's radar and they're simply using more primary care or the ER for um, acute visits, um, there might be some opportunity there too. And I know the link has um, an exam room that um, some community members in terms of um, the UND counseling goes there. Um, UND med school has some limited hours there. And so we could, there's already an exam in a counseling room um, that's located right on 8th and Cherry here. So that might be, you know, kind of the first place to try. And then there's, I think, seven other facilities. So that, that could be a potential. Wonderful. It's a great idea, Mara. <clears throat> Um, we're coming up close to one o'clock. I, I want to respect everyone's schedule, but also kind of see if there's any last thoughts or comments. It sounds like there's interest in having kind of a broader, um, broader discussion, maybe with multiple organizations at the table to kind of dig into some of these opportunities and first steps. And so, um, Maybe what I'll do is kind of follow up with um, with you, Betty, um, and kind of think about what would be the next steps for that. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. That sounds really good. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining. I think um, I do just want to say congratulations to the team at Valley and at the, the Altru Endoscopy team. I think what's been so inspiring for me to watch is that both of these facilities were so fully committed to serving patients and really came to the table um, just equally energized and motivated and wanted to see the best outcome for patients. And so that's so wonderful to see as an external partner. And I just want to thank both of their teams. And I'm excited to see kind of where this continues to progress. Oh, thank you, Tra Tracy says great job to everyone. <laughs> Yeah, this has been a really good learning experience, and we're we're only about halfway through the project, so I think we'll continue to learn and, and share together, and thank you again for everyone for joining the call. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yep, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. bye.